Hey guys, Pete here. Today I'll be explaining the end of Better Call Saul Season 5. This video will contain spoilers for everything that happened in the series through the Episode 5 finale and everything that happened in Breaking Bad and El Camino. If you haven't watched the fifth season yet, what are you doing here? You should go watch it now because in my opinion, it was the best season of Better Call Saul so far and I like them all. Some big things happened this season. Jimmy McGill began practicing law under the name Saul Goodman, and he got married to his long-term love interest, Kim Wexler. He also began working with a different type of clientele, and this is where things got interesting. Jimmy's legal story being unconnected from the other Breaking Bad characters, Gus and Mike, and the criminal world, at times made things feel like it was two shows rather than one. Season five managed to bring everything together. When Jimmy was recruited to work with the cartel, Unfortunately, he couldn't keep his two worlds separate though, and Kim ended up on the cartel's radar as well. This all came to a head in Season 5's penultimate episode when Lalo Salamanca barged into Jimmy and Kim's apartment looking for answers. With Jimmy still recovering from his harrowing journey through the desert, Kim had to step in to take charge of the confrontation, and in the end, she was able to get Lalo to leave. That set up the season 5 finale where Kim and Jimmy had to take stock of their situation and Gus makes his move to take out the Salamanca family once and for all. So how did it all turn out and what does it mean for the rest of the series? Before we dive into the ending, I just want to mention that I did a detailed recap of episode 10, which I'll put a link to at the top of this video. I'm also working on a season 5 recap for the entire season, so subscribe if you want to check back for that. Now let's talk about Jimmy and Kim's plan and where that title, Something Unforgivable, comes from. The finale of season 5 kicks off immediately after Lalo leaves the apartment. Jimmy comes clean about what really happened in the desert, and fearing for their safety, Jimmy and Kim leave home to check into a hotel nearby where they stay for most of the episode. While they don't go far, this is where we see the biggest development in setting up the final season. When they first arrive at the hotel, Jimmy asks his wife if he's bad for her. This sets the stage for what's to come. Kim says, you crossed a line, you're not going to do it again. Jimmy responds with a yeah, but his expression tells us that he knows he'll find himself in a situation like this again. Kim goes to the courthouse and while she's there she runs into Howard. He tells her about the things Jimmy has done to mess with him after he made the job offer. It's a short interaction but it's so consequential. After hearing about the bowling balls and prostitutes Kim laughs in Howard's face. This tells us a few things. First, that after what Kim's been through in the last couple of days, she's got bigger things on her mind. Second, although Howard went about this in the worst way possible, there's some truth in what he's saying about Jimmy, and he's in a unique position to see it because he knows Jimmy better than most people in the story. Lastly, the way that Kim reacts says that she is all in on their marriage and protective of Jimmy if someone tries to disparage him. But also, and perhaps more importantly, she has a real problem problem with people telling her what she should think or what she should do. While Kim was at the courthouse, Jimmy learns from Mike that there's a plan in motion to kill Lalo that night. That gives him some relief, but he's still thinking that maybe he should separate from Kim to keep her out of danger. When she returns to the room, he half-heartedly offers to leave. She quickly sets out to distract him from this line of thinking, pointing out that they already paid for the hotel room so they might as well enjoy it. Over dinner, when she brings up the conversation at the courthouse to Jimmy, the way Howard approached her with his concerns far outweighed the substance of what he was saying. This opens the door for her to throw out the idea of joining Jimmy and continuing to harass their former employee. They start off innocently enough, but things quickly escalate. They go from using Nair to make Howard's hair fall out to Kim saying, we'd never do it, but what if Howard does something terrible? No, I mean really bad, like misconduct, you know, misappropriating funds, bribing witnesses, something like that. We watch as Kim moves past, we'd never do it, but, and we see her get to the idea that we could pull this off. She expresses the good she thinks she can do with the $2 million they stand to collect from the Sandpiper settlement. She paints a picture of a scenario where everyone wins except of course Howard, and she minimizes the downside by saying it would be just a career setback from one lawyer. Her plan is to open a pro bono law center so people with limited means can get the same kind of representation that millionaires get. Jimmy tries to stop the plan's momentum by pointing out that what she's suggesting goes far beyond scamming someone at a bar. He tells her it would take Howard doing something unforgivable to get the other lawyers to turn on him. He goes as far as saying that this scorched earth strategy is not Kim. 
It's not who she is. And that she wouldn't be okay with it, not in the cold light of day. As viewers, everything Jimmy is saying tracks with what we know about Kim Wexler, right up to the point where she looks him in the eye and says, wouldn't I? Wouldn't she be okay with it? She looks dead serious. And the question changes from would Kim really do something like this to Howard to has Kim done something like this before? We don't know because we don't really know about her background. She gets up to take a shower and she tops the whole thing off by turning to Jimmy and making the finger guns that we saw him do at the end of season four. As far as we can tell, she's all in for this and she's ready for whatever's to come. Jimmy, on the other hand, looks like he is uncomfortable. He looks lost and alone. And it's a mere image of the way Kim looked when he told her he was going to start practicing as Saul Goodman. Going into the season five finale, we had three characters whose fates were unknown, Kim, Lalo, and Nacho Varga. Nacho was the most likely candidate to become a casualty since he's been stuck in the role of playing both sides in a cartel cold war. He worked his way up in the Salamanca family organization, but when he made a move to get out from under his boss, Hector, Gus Fring found out and compromised him. Nacho's plan was to get out of the drug business, and in doing that, he would protect his father who has no connection to his criminal activity. Gus had other plans and won't let go of his asset, even when Mike encourages him to do so. After getting bailed out of jail and his visit to Kim and Jimmy's, Lalo instructs Nacho to take him to Mexico. They arrive at his well-protected hacienda, and that's where Gus plans to move forward with his assassination attempt. Nacho plays his part and goes along with things, and even manages to impress Don Eladio when Lalo takes him to meet the cartel boss. The assassins eventually make contact and instruct Nacho to leave the back gate open. He manages that after creating a diversion, and then slips out the door to freedom, from the compound at least. It's too early to tell what that will mean. Under the threat of violence against his father, he betrayed one boss to serve the other. He managed to survive the season, but he finds himself in a really difficult situation because the boss he served didn't succeed in his plan to take out the other one. It wasn't from a lack of planning either, and don't forget just how much Gus and Mike had to do to get to the point where they could make a move on Lalo south of the border. Gus Fring is a man who knows how to get things done, and for all intents and purposes, his plan was not the problem. According to the showrunner Peter Gould, the one thing Gus, Nacho, and Mike weren't counting on is that Lalo is tricky, he's lucky, he's smart, and he's able to triumph against incredible odds. And that's what he does, he triumphs. With some quick thinking and a plan to use his escape tunnel as a trap for his attackers, Lalo manages to make it out of the season alive. After the gun battle is over, Lalo uses the one assassin who hasn't died yet to call the man who hired him. He tells him that it was a middleman, but Lalo isn't worried about that because he says he knows who actually hired him. The call is placed so the middleman will report to Gus that Lalo has been killed, which should buy him a little time to plan his next move. Lalo notices that Nacho isn't around, and when he looks at the decanter, that tells us that he suspects Nacho was involved in the attack. The season ends with Lalo walking away from his hacienda into the darkness after seeing the dead body of his cook. His home has been attacked, he's been betrayed by the man who he was entrusting to run his family business in the US, and we can imagine that his number one priority will be revenge. At the end of Better Call Saul Season 5, Jimmy and Kim are still together. Lalo and Nacho are both still alive, and Gus is somewhat exposed after his failed assassination attempt. Kim has a plan to go after Howard, and even though he probably should try to stop her, I think we can expect Jimmy to go along with it. These two have come a long way since the first episode of the season. In that, Kim is trying to slow down Jimmy's plans to practice as Saul Goodman. He throws out the idea of offering a 50% off deal to potential new clients, and she gets him to reconsider. He even says, see, this is why this works. I go too far and you pull me back. By the end, things are turned the other way around, and Jimmy is the one who wants to slow Kim down. We can imagine that he won't be able to change her course any more than she was able to change his. They haven't exactly switched places, but evolved alongside each other based on their circumstances. When Jimmy crossed the line the first time by surprising her at the Mesa Verde meeting, she decided to double down on the relationship and get married. This and her turn at the end leaves us heading into the final season wondering what's really going on with Kim. I discussed that and other questions going into season six in my questions video I put out last week. So if you wanna join the conversation about Kim and where she's heading, you should check out that video. 
For now, it's a cliffhanger as to where her plan to take down Howard in order to get the Sandpiper settlement done is coming from. Nacho is in Mexico, where Lalo will probably like to have a word with him. Gus has been reluctant to help him under normal circumstances, so Mike will probably have to make that happen if Nacho is able to get away. Lalo will be out to settle the score and exact his revenge against Gus, and his plans will probably include Jimmy since he came through with the bail money when he needed him to. Jimmy may still have to deal with the lingering effects of his PTSD and his buried feelings about his brother Chuck's death. While he took a few steps back at the end of the season, everything is still in place for him to become the Saul Goodman we know from Breaking Bad. But it does seem likely that something will have to come up to take Kim out of the picture before that happens. There's only one season of Better Call Saul to come. It will be 13 episodes and we'll find out what happens between Jimmy and Kim, what happens with Lalo and Nacho, and how Jimmy fully embraces this persona of Saul Goodman that we know from Breaking Bad. And with that, I'll leave it there. Let me know in the comments what you think's going to happen in the next season. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.